Welcome back to watching a PC WizKid review. We're looking at a brand new AMD build. It's a silent build using the AMD FX8320E, E for efficient, meaning energy efficient range of CPUs from AMD, that's right. Came out a couple months ago and I had a chance to put this together. I was trying to get all these components that I thought would make a nice, cool, and quiet system. Starting off with the case. Look at this beauty, okay? It's a very elegant case from Cooler Master. It's the Silencio case, okay? Here are the uh, components that I'm using, the Silencio 652S and the Cooler Master Glacier 240L, nice uh, version 2, the water cooler, all in one and uh, paired it up with an MSI 970 gaming board and a Club 3D R9 285 graphics card, okay? So again, this case is heavy. It's got a thick uh, padding on there, of course, for the noise dampening. It's gonna absorb the vibrations and the noise coming out of uh, the inside of the case, and that's why we're using this. The processor is perfect because it's not a power-hungry processor, right? We're talking about a processor that uh, uh, maximum 95 uh, watts, right? So low wattage on that one compared to other AMD um, uh, CPUs, which are, for example, 125 watts, okay? The uh, case modular design, lots of air filters there, okay? So you can uh, clean, easy access to, to everything. Uh, rubber feet there, so less vibration on this case, very good. And um, well, what else can I tell you? The power supply, excellent. The Antec Edge 520, okay, watt, or sorry, 550 watt. That's all you need, 550 watt. For this type of machine, why would you get anything more? As long as it's 80 plus gold efficiency, well, it runs smooth and very quiet, enough power and performance to keep up with anything, including overclocking. And I didn't overclock the graphics card, by the way, running it at defaults. Here are the tubes coming out of that radiator, in case you're wondering, what is that? And uh, for the radiator itself, I did not add any additional fans. Again, I want to keep things cool and quiet, so we're just running the two fans that it came with. You could add more if you had a different type of machine, and maybe you don't want to keep it quiet. Maybe you want to, you know, blast it and have all these fans, and you don't care if it runs loud. But in my case, for this specific system, I on purpose wanted to keep it running uh, quiet, so the RPMs of the fans are running fairly slow, good enough to keep things cool, no interference from any components. Um, the uh, memory, by the way, that you just saw there, the Patriot Viper 3 memory, excellent memory, okay, F beautiful, runs very fast, CL10 timings, you'll see the specs in just a second. The modular design of this case makes it a snap to adjust the size and put in your SSD drive in there. As you can see, I already did that in here. Such, uh, you know, ease of use when they make these things toolless design. And Cooler Master is truly the master of making a lot of these gaming cases. Um, now, should you decide to install more SSD drives, go right ahead, uh, you know, but I... In this case, just had one SSD drive. I just wanted to see how it ran with Windows 8.1. Um, as you can see here, I didn't really add anything fancy, no optical drives or anything, just the default case with the two fans at the front that's intaking the cooler air. And there's obviously notches on the side of the case for the air to come in, in case you're wondering where is the air coming in when you close that door. Well, it is coming through the sides. At the top, you got the USB 3.0, 2.0, headset mic, and a little SD card slot, a little memory reader. Very nice touch there. The top panel comes off very easily to reveal a dust filter, which again also comes off should you decide you wanted to take a look at the two fans that are attached to the radiator. So obviously those are going to... Uh, uh, pump hot air out through that uh, vent and um, they're not running too fast as you can see right there okay and it is quiet you can actually run this case with just this top um, air filter uh, panel and uh, slide that back in there and just leave it like that you don't have to put the top cover on top it's still quiet that's what I love about this okay moving along now to uh, some system benchmarks okay so we're starting here off at defaults uh, 95 watt CPU, the TDP that I mentioned, it's fluctuating because it depends on what you're doing. You know, turbo will kick in to four gigahertz or it'll go all the way down into an idle mode and use less energy. So that's like 0 0.9 volts, for example, or, or less, uh, as you can see there, as it fluctuates, depending on the usage, 
Temperatures were really low. We're talking about 20 degrees Celsius, super low in, 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 uh, in my room right here. Obviously, temperatures will vary plus or uh, minus a couple degrees depending on, on your situation. Here are the specs of the memory. You can pause the screen, take a look at that slowly whenever you want. And the uh, graphics card that I mentioned already. Now, when it comes to power usage, if you run this thing at full 100% load, you know, you're going to obviously use a little bit more power. Uh, but in, on idle, you know, at 3.2 gigahertz, 57 watts, that's basically nothing. As you can see right there, that's like a light bulb. And 155 watts if you're running it at full 100% load. Now, overclock to 4.4, 4.5 gigahertz even, because I did overclock it to 4.5 gigahertz also. Not much uh, of a difference, which was terrific. I mean, I did obviously... Uh, have to bump up the voltage to uh, 1.4 um, 5 volts for example sure but temperatures didn't go up dramatically when I uh, ran it at a hundred percent load I mean look at those temperatures less than 50 degrees Celsius running at 4.5 gigahertz sweet okay sweet and also it was a quiet system again it all depends on your components what you get and how many fans, how fast the fans are running, all of that, you gotta put all that into consideration. Here's the power usage, the system power usage, in case you're wondering, okay, 115 watts on idle, 285 watts on full load. And, um, well, what else can I show you here on the sensor readings from the ADA64, you can see again, uh, running it at 100% load, the temperature readings on the CPU, the case, the fan speeds, because I know you're wondering what are the fan speeds and the pump speed, of course, that's the CPU, uh, 3200 uh, RPM is for the pump, okay. Cache and memory, okay, so we're talking about some benchmarks relating to the CPU working with the Patriot memory and the cache that's built in on the, uh, the die of the CPU, okay, so level 1, level 2, level 3 cache. And comparing all of these with other CPUs, okay, in that range, you can see on the defaults, so this is default readings right now, so it's 4 gigahertz, that's uh, with turbo enabled, you can see there the timings of the Patriot Viper 3 memory that I'm using, okay, and uh, these are different benchmarks, right, we got the CPU queen, we got the photo uh, tests, we got the, the um, archiving test, there's different types of tests that you can run the CPU through, and uh, that's what I'm showing you right now, different types of tests, and the results of the FX 8320E CPU, basically a budget entry level type of 8 core CPU. You're really not going to find an 8 core CPU from Intel that is priced less than this one. Okay, you're not going to find it. This is basically the cheapest um, 8 core CPU that you can find right now. So, a uh, terrific entry level or mid range 8 core CPU if you're looking for that right now on a gaming PC. Okay. And uh, again, if I overclock this to 4.5 gigahertz, yes, there's going to be a bump up in scores. And you can see there the megabytes per second results. Okay, so when we're comparing here, we're looking at the transfer speeds, the bandwidth, how much it's able to, to basically move data around, how much of it can it move around. Um, PC Mark 8 and Skydiver, uh, you know, these are all benchmarks from FutureMark. You can pause the screen anytime you want, take a look at these slowly and uh, compare those to other results that I've done in the past to other CPUs. I've always used these same benchmarks to, to do that. At 4.5 gigahertz, overclocking it, you are gonna get a boost in results. Of course, frames per second will go a little bit higher. Loading times will be faster. You can see again, the overall score here on the Skydiver did go up as well as Fire Strike. Not as high as a high-end PC from Intel and Intel Core i7, obviously, but again, you're saving a lot more money by by putting it together a system like this. Here's some gaming benchmarks in case you're wondering about that R9 285 GPU that I'm using in here. And actually I did a separate video review of just the GPU and a whole bunch of games. So if you're interested in seeing more, click on the link below to see the uh, review on the R9 285 graphics card that I used for this machine. So there you have it. There's the beautiful silent gaming PC that has all of these components. I'd like to thank all of these manufacturers for providing them. Thank you AMD, for example, for the CPU and MSI for the board and everyone else. I like to thank them for providing it. Comment below, let me know what you think. And again, thank you for watching.